Let's look into the crystal ball and imagine that we leave uh, the EU in six months with no deal. How easy would it be to trade under World Trade Organization terms? Wow. Do you remember when the, that question was asked of Remainers during the referendum and everyone screamed Project Fear and Project Fear turned into Project Fact? What we now need to start doing is being prepared for Project Catastrophe because no deal is looking the most likely outcome of the discussions. What that means for the UK economy is everything we export around the world will have the, the, one of the highest tariffs it's possible to apply. So if we sell a widget today for a pound to Mexico, Canada, United States, Japan, South Korea, anywhere to 60 countries outside the EU and within the EU 27, everything we export will become more expensive for, uh, for our customers to buy from us and more complex and more complicated. Now, 5.4 million small to medium-sized enterprises in the UK, the, the economists for Brexit say that 334,000 of those currently ship to the European Union without any problems, friction-free. Each of those will have to have a cost of thousands and thousands of pounds to these small businesses to get freight forwarders, customs agents, or they have to figure it out for themselves. Nobody knows how to do it. So, um, so what's, 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 what about the argument that some people say, look, if we do leave with no deal and it's World Trade Organization terms, the reality is we'll end up making lots of little mini deals and that will enable the economy to function. Well, if you think about it, right now we've got the, uh, the best deal it's possible to get with the largest single market on the planet. As well as that, as a member of the European Union, we have 34 different trade agreements with other countries and trade blocks. So we have another 60 countries, six zero countries around the world that we can export to freely and much more easily, including with the United States of America. To save uh, David having to say it, um, they claim that more than half of our trade is not with the European Union, and he's absolutely right. Just over 55% of our trade is with those other countries around the world. Now, we don't always have to have a complete free trade agreement because that's like a marriage. That's, you, you end up with a free trade agreement. Before that, you have an engagement, and then before you, that for a period of time, and before that, you have a few dates, and you might have a few phone calls before that. What the European Union have with the USA are dozens upon dozens of cooperation agreements, which is the first stages to get to an FTA further down the line. And these things take years. And if you ask uh, any of the experts um, around the world in international trade, they will say, OK, the, if the UK leaves with no deal, the first place they're likely to go to and get a trade deal with, the quickest and easiest one, will probably be with somebody like Canada because they have a liberalized trade policy, very similar to the United Kingdoms. They have a, a liberal democracy type governance state situation in the country. And that's, you're probably looking at about two years to negotiate a trade deal with Canada. That's the quick and easy one. Something with the EU, probably eight to 10 years. And then we've got another 60 to do all around the world after that. And um, the crux here, of course, is that people voted to take back control, didn't they? And for the UK to be free to tre trade with whoever they like, whenever we like. And you can't just reject the decision of 17 million people, can you? Because well, you don't agree with them. That, that's not what I'm saying. I mean, I, I, I think we should, no, two years on, I mean, two, 2016, we know that Vote Leave lied. We know that Leave EU lied. We know that Vote Leave broke the law. The Electoral Commission have prosecuted them. They overspent by 10% to get a 2% vote swing. David Cameron said there'd be World War III. George Osborne said we're going to have an emergency budget and the world's going to collapse. None of that happened. Nobody knew. Everybody lied. That's not democracy. If you think any of that's OK, you don't believe in democracy. What you do believe in is Brexit, and that's just ridiculous. Okay, we so have to have a fair, free and open vote. Now we know what the deal is. Let's find out what no deal means, because we know. Experts all around the world are telling us this is what happens under WTO. You, or you stay in the EU. Well, Those or, are your two options. Or you have Theresa May's Chequers deal. Now, would that okay. enable uh, the UK to trade frictionlessly? The, the Chequers deal is off, off the table because what Theresa... Well, not according to Theresa May it isn't. It's only, that or no deal. The only people talking about Chequers are in Westminster. In Brussels and every other country in the world, they're looking at this going, what are they playing at? The withdrawal agreement, this negotiation, the deal that everybody in the world is expecting to happen, and the one that we said we would do, consists of securing the, citizen, the rights of citizens in the EU and in the UK. Second point was the financial settlement. 
And the third point was the, was the border on the island of Ireland, getting a, a permanent solution to those three things. That's all that's involved within the Article 50 discussions. There's a couple of smaller things like geographic indicators for food. Can a Cornish pasty be called a Cornish pasty if it's made in France? And can champagne be called? But that, that'll, that'll, be, that'll be the easy piece waved through. We have to get those three points agreed by next month. We're talking four weeks away. October the 18th is the deadline to have those three points done. And then we leave on the 29th of March next year once that's ratified. It's extremely unlikely that Theresa May is going to ask the EU to break up their four basic founding, founding principles of the single market and say, we just want access to the single market for goods, but not services and not free movement of people. If you look at the size of the populations, this would be like Kazakhstan coming to the United Kingdom and saying, we demand you give us a free, deal, a free trade deal, United Kingdom, but we only want to work with England and Scotland. We don't want to work with Wales and Northern Ireland, and you've got to split it all up and do that. That's what Theresa May is asking the European Union to do, to break up the fundamental principles of this trading bloc. And they're our nearest neighbours. Six months to go. Uh, Jason Hunter, we've got to leave it there. Good to talk okay. to you. I'm really grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca.